um, and to, to the public and to to the government that there are there are things that can help this. So you know, um, overdose prevention sites is one thing. We need proper opiate replacement therapies. So that doesn't mean just methadose or method or suboxone. That means hydromorph, Dilaudid, um prescription heroin um just because you you have pain um doesn't mean that you should not be able to have the things that you, you that make that you feel you. better drug use is drug is drug use is is it's not a crime it's and addiction is a health care um the, if if this many people were dying say because there's a bad medication with diabetics do you think that if they announced a health emergency in April, that it would take them until December with over 800 people dying before they even start to do anything? The reason they, the only reason they started to do anything is because we we're pushing them. It's the people that are, are using and the people that are the frontline workers that are going through the hardest things. If it weren't for them, so many more people would die. The thing is, is that um, opiate overdose is there. There is um, there is a way to stop it. We can. We do sometimes, you know, be able to bring people back. But this, the thing is, is that there there needs to be there, there's a plateau of things, and um, we have all the suggestions and the not the ideas, the know of what we know works. Um, we need our government to grab its shoulders, get some balls, is what they would say. Yes. When I, um, I had a meeting, a private meeting with about 20 of us with Justin Trudeau a couple weeks ago, and we asked him, as of March 31st, we were no longer supposed to be getting funding for the overdose prevention sites. So we asked, are you going to make sure that that doesn't happen? He said yes, but you never know. The next thing is, is we said, you know, one of the biggest things that could help this is if we were able to have proper heroin prescription. And he said, well, I've had hard enough time with the marijuana that I don't think I can take on the heroin. So thank you, buddy, for everybody here who's standing that's either lost somebody or is going to lose somebody. Um, his shoulders are where most of our anger and our sadness should hang because he is one of the people in Canada or the world that can change this for us and he is not going to. So we need to do it ourselves. Yeah. So no more drug war! Trudeau lies, people die. There you go, like Kevin said, Trudeau lies, people die. So we're gonna keep on going. Okay, Trudeau lies, people die. Someone in British Columbia dies of opioid overdose. And it's happening across the country as well. Shame! We want to put this on camera.
but it's really effective. We did all the same moves. Oh yeah. Every day, every six hours, and in other provinces, every 12 hours. In Alberta, there's like 350 deaths already this year. Nobody should have to wait to, to, to use this service. No one should ever have to wait to use this service. And we are demanding from our federal government immediate exemption for all supervised consumption sites across the country. We have Al Fowler here from BCA Palms, who's going to talk to a little more about what is what needs to change. Hello, people. Hello. Good to see you all out here. Rock on. So, uh, Rock on. my name's my name's Al. I'm with. Uh, I'm 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 uh, president of the British Columbia Association of People on Methadone. So what we are calling for is we are calling for more options in, in opioid assisted treatments that whether be it the, you know the slow release morphines, the injectable heroines, but we need we need we need lots more options in our care. Methadose doesn't do it for everybody, it doesn't do it for hardly half of us. So what we're calling for is we need more options in treatment. We need Crosstown Clinic down there, Providence Healthcare. We need we, we need them to be able to triple their services immediately to kind of relieve some stress. We're, we're, we're calling on the governments now. The, the studies have been done. The research has been done. The people are freaking dying. We know what's not working. Let's try some of these things that are working in other countries like Portugal, Sweden, you know, Europe, right? Yeah. You know, their, their people aren't dying like this. Yeah. We had we had a big step. I guess I guess China is now regulating the, the, the manufacture of car fentanyl. So that's a little bit of a help. But there's probably three container full sitting down in the harbor right now. So we got to burn through that before we all get better. So the sooner that the options are open for our treatment, the better. We'll save our lives and carry on, people. All right, cross down the Samona, where are you?
as heroin and hydromorphone. We have demands at all levels of government for increasing access to injectable opioids. Prescription heroin and prescription hydromorphone. We want the federal government to remove all barriers due to the prescription of heroin. You want to go over here? Oh no, just, I'm just saying Dave's here. Okay, Dave, uh, we're going to have Dave Murray uh, talking in just a moment. Uh, we have already heard from our provincial health minister that the responsibility for scaling up and recommending injectable opioids lies with the BC Center on Substance Use. And we need their support and we need them to recommend injectable opioid assisted treatments so people can get them across the province. Here we have Dave Murray. Uh, he's going to talk to you about, the, about our demand. clinic, And every one of them is alive today. Yeah. And because of Crosstown Clinic, Crosstown Clinic is a sanctuary for those people. You ask any one of them and they'll tell you they wouldn't, they might not be alive today if it hadn't been for the, the clinic. Today in, in, in Victoria, the government of, of British Columbia will announce that they have collected two billion dollars more than they spent last year. Don't let them tell you they don't have the money to change things. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> They could change things tomorrow. There's no compassion from those people. Two billion dollars would change everyone's life here. And they could, they could expand clinics like this that would actually save lives starting tomorrow. Two, two billion dollars and save money too. And save money. And save money. Last week we had the, the Canadian health minister, uh, Jane Philpott, visited the clinic and she is very positive about the, the possibilities of expanding this this, this uh, life-saving this life-saving uh, facility and and expanding it for for more people. Uh, hopefully that that she has the the power to do that and she can convince her colleagues in the cabinet in Ottawa uh, that we're not going to get any action from the provincial government because the election's coming up, but. Hopefully by by the spring and the by the uh, by the fall things will start to happen. Anyway, thanks for coming, everybody. I'm really happy that we had such a beautiful day. I was uh, I was having nightmares about it raining today. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Dave Murray. Now onward to our last stop, the St. Clair Center in Health Canada. Life won't wait. Life won't wait. Life won't wait. Life won't wait. Life won't wait! 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 Life won't wait!
turn us around. Turn us around and go to the on the back. Sure, let's see. Thank you. You bet. Thank you.